Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise the Lord. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us once again. Uh, as we get into the Word of God today, we're going to be talking about our topic of Jesus, the High Priest of our profession. Jesus is the High Priest of our profession. We're going to be talking about that, find out more about what that profession is, and just getting into the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to encourage you, if you have a Roku box, that's R-O-K-U, Roku, we actually have an, a little kind of an advertising banner, uh, which I'll put up here on the bottom of the screen so you can see it here. Uh, that's what it looks like on the website. If you go down into the lower right-hand corner, click on that red advertisement-looking thing there, <laughs> you will see that we have uh, a very special deal available uh, for those of you that want to buy a Roku box. You know, it, it's not like we're making any money off of it or anything, but... $49 and that includes shipping. That's pretty good. 49 I think it's $49.99. But at any rate, if, once you get the Roku box, if you follow the instructions on that banner, you can connect to our speakfaith.tv Roku channel and you'll be able to get this netcast as well as uh, the Faith and Victory Church services right on your Roku box and our radio programs, the audio from that that are on WFR. Org, both Pastor Ed Taylor's from Faith and Victory Church and my uh, Word of Faith broadcast. So, tremendous resource available for you. I encourage you to go check that out and uh, take advantage of that because it's a tremendous blessing. Of course, we're not the only ones that have a Roku channel. Uh, Brother Kenneth Copeland has a Roku channel. He has BVOV.TV that is broadcasting everybody. He has his daily programs archives of his daily programs back several months and also his Sunday programs. Now I know a lot of you in your areas you don't have the Sunday program on TV anymore. Well you can get them right there on the Roku channel for Kenneth Copeland Ministries. So I'd encourage you to check that out. And then Rama Bible Training Center, the Rama channel, is coming soon with uh, uh, pa Pastor Kenneth Hagen Jr. I call him Kenneth Hagen Jr. He's really not a junior. Uh, but, of course, you know, Dad Hagen, uh, we go back a long way listening to his messages. Uh, but at any rate, Pastor Hagen, that's the best way to put it, Pastor Hagen has a program uh, channel coming on Roku as well. So that resource of the Roku box is a tremendous benefit to those of you that want to get into the Word of God. So I'd encourage you to check that out. And then, of course, WFR.org. Oh, my, I tell you, there's some good programs on there preaching the uncompromised word of faith. You need to get into that. Our daily program is on right after Kenneth Copeland's daily program. He comes on at 11 o'clock, Monday through Friday. Of course, he has a 30-minute program. So then we come on right after him at 11.30 with our 15-minute daily program. And then we have the half-hour program on Sunday that is also right after Brother Copeland's program. He comes on at 9 in the morning. We come on at 9.30 on Sunday mornings. So, tremendous opportunities to get into the Word of God. Amen? All right. Let's talk about what we've been sharing uh, concerning the Word of God on Jesus, the high priest of our profession. Jesus is the high priest of our profession. We've been talking about that. And I want to, uh, to continue with that topic. I'm going to pull up my scriptures here. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Should have had that before we started the program, but it's never too late. Praise the Lord. 1 Timothy 6.12, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession. Now, before many witnesses. Now, this term profession, as it is translated in the King James, is the Greek word, we talked about this last time, the Greek word homo logio. Homo mean, meaning the same, 
Logio coming from Logos, which is the written Word of God. Now, there are two references to the Word of God, two Greek words that are used. One is Logos, or Logos, depending on how you pronounce it, and uh, that is the written Word. And then there's the Rhema, like Rhema Bible Training Center. Rhema is the spoken Word of God. So you go to the Logos to get what's in the written Word, then you speak it out of your mouth, and that becomes the spoken Word. And then, of course, when God spoke, let there be light, that spoken word is what he brought to pass by the power of his faith and speaking things into existence. And then he said we should take the same manner, the same faith, literally the faith of God, and we should put his word in our mouth, speak it out of our mouth, and that would come to pass as well. So. Jesus is the high priest of our homologio, or speaking the same thing as what the Word of God says in the written Word. Now, uh, Hebrews 3, 1 says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our homologio, Christ Jesus. In other words, our confession, our profession. A lot of translations translate this word that's translated in King James profession. They translate it confession. But it is the Greek word, same Greek word, homo logio, speaking the same thing as what the written word says. So, let's look at it that way. Jesus, consider him the apostle and high priest of our speaking the same thing as the written word of God says. Now, Jesus is the high priest of our profession or our confession and that is what we've been talking about we've been getting in some really good things last week we talked about the fact that we have a more sure word of prophecy than hearing the audible voice of God we have the written word of God which is forever settled in heaven and we talked about that a little bit but I want to pick up with something there you remember we found out that the that the phrase there that the Word of God, the written Word, is not open to any private interpretation. And we found out that word private is ideo in the Greek, from which we get the word, and this is the part I forgot to mention, from which we get the word idea. Idea comes from that same Greek word ideo. Now, if you think about that, what it's saying is, we don't have the right to a private idea of what the Word of God says. We only believe and say exactly what the written Word of God says. See, there's a lot of things that people think, you know, that's really inconvenient. I don't like the fact that the Bible says this or that or whatever, you know. I would rather it say something else. Well, your private idea of what it should say doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's what God said in His written Word that we are to be speaking the same as what He said in His written Word. Jesus is the high priest of us doing just that, taking the written Word of God and speaking it out of our mouth. Now Isaiah 55 says that when we return His Word to Him, it will not return unto Him void of the power required to cause that word to come to pass. That's a little bit of the Hebrew meaning there, but that gives you the gist of it. Now what does that mean, return his word to it? How do you return God's word to it? See, I could, I could reach behind me here and get one of these Bibles, and I could throw it up in the air all day long, and you know it would not return unto God. So how am I going to return his word to it? I'm going to return his word to him when I take what's in those Bibles, get it down into my heart, and then speak it out of my mouth. If I'll do that, then it will return to him, and it will not return to him void of the power required to bring whatever it says in that word to pass. Do you see that? In other words, and we said this last week as well, God says that he upholds all creation, all things, by the power of his 
word. His word is the power by which this whole universe is held in uh, suspension, in other words, or in reality, if you will. God's word is what holds it all together. Did you know, now let me just digress just a bit here by way of explanation. There is a scientific principle that is called entropy. I know that's, a, that's not a word you use every day in everyday conversation, but hang in there with me. The word entropy means that everything by its natural state tends to fall apart. Now you may say, oh, well, that sounds terrible. <laughs> well, that's I believe it's part of the curse that's on the earth that, that in, in the universe, the natural universe, um, is why entropy exists. Now let me give you an example of entropy. If you take a nice, shiny, it's going to sound a little silly, but take a nice, shiny tin can, and you put it out in the elements, and it rains, and it gets cold, and it gets hot, and it rains, all this kind of stuff's happening. What's going to happen to that can? It's going to get rusty, isn't it? And if you leave it there long enough, that rust, literally, the metal begins to crumble into that rust. You've seen that old scaly looking rust, and it just kind of falls off. You know, it almost looks like metal leprosy, <laughs> if you let me put it that way. But basically, given enough time, you can come up and pick up that old can if it's been there for a long, long time and just take your two little fingers and just crush it and it'll crumble like it's made out of cardboard or something. I mean, just crumble apart. I picked up an old tin can and had it just crumble into pieces in my hand. Now, why does that happen? That is because of a process called entropy. Things tend to deteriorate. In the natural, now understand what I'm saying here, in the natural, people get older, they get, so to speak, more worn out. <laughs> Entropy begins to break down things in their body. You know, that's not what God designed the body to do. God designed Adam's body to constantly refresh itself every seven years. Every cell in your body is replaced every seven years. But because of the curse, it actually, when it's replaced, it's replaced with a slightly, let's call it damaged uh, uh, cell, okay? So that over time, your skin gets wrinklier, your hair gets grayer, you know, all of these kinds of things happen. Entropy. Same thing with an apple. Nice, fresh apple you just picked off the tree. You put it out and watch it over time, over a few days. It'll shrivel down to a brown, gooey mess. That's entropy. Now, why am I talking about entropy? Well, left to itself, the whole universe would just dissolve itself into a mess because of entropy. And again, just me, you don't have to believe this. I'm not teaching this as some you know, doctrine that's absolute. I'm just saying I believe that entropy it was introduced into the system because of the curse. Okay? But God says he upholds all things through the power of his word. God says in his word that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen? So we are on a different standard. We're on basically what I believe is the standard that Adam lived under before the fall. If we would just believe... <laughs> the way we ought to believe and lay hold on the blessing, capital B blessing, like we should, we could believe for renewal on that level and live, you know, lives where our eyes were not dimmed, neither was our strength abated, like what happened with Moses. Amen? You say, I don't know about that, Dr. Bill. Well, just, you know, just, just put it on the shelf. Hallelujah. But... You know, I'm not saying anybody's living up to that level, but I tell you what, as you believe the Word of God, as you stand on the Word of God, you'll find that your youth will be renewed like the eagles, and you will be able to stay stronger and sound of mind and sound of sight. <laughs> Have your eyes not dimmed as you get older. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. We ought to stand for that. Amen, because that's part of the blessing that we have, and I use again, capital B, blessing. Amen. So, here's 
where we're going with this. God wants us to speak his word, not based on our ideas, but based on what his word says. By speaking his word, and again, Jesus is the high priest of our homologio, as we speak God's word, it returns it back unto him. His word contains the power within it to cause it to come to pass. So it's a self-fulfilling cycle. We get the word, we get it in our heart, we speak the word, the word contains the power within itself to cause that word to come to pass. As I begin to confess that Jesus bore my sicknesses and carried my diseases, and by his stripes I was, you know, the First Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes we were healed. Well, if I was healed, then I am the healed. Amen. So I confess I was healed by the stripes of Jesus. I confess that Psalm 103, 1 through 3 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all his benefits. Amen. One of which is to heal all my diseases. Well, as I begin to confess that, the power to bring that to pass is within those words. And Jesus, as our high priest, ministers that to us. And what do I end up? I end up healed. I end up whole. I end up well. Hallelujah. I end up living in divine health. I, you know, I don't get a cold every year. I don't have to put up with allergies. I've had people at work tell me, oh, it's allergy season. Here we go again. I'm going to be sniffling and blah, 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 blah. Oh, this pollen. You know, I've got the same pollen that they have to deal with. Matter of fact, my whole house is surrounded by trees, and I'm telling you, and plants of every kind, and pollen's in the air so much you can see it just like a yellow cloud almost. But you know what? I don't get sniffly. I don't have allergies. You say, wow, you're lucky, Dr. Bill. No, luck doesn't have anything to do with it. I have been confessing for, for years that I'm not allergic to anything. Nothing evil can come nigh my dwelling. Psalm 91. What does that mean? The word evil there that's translated in Psalm 91 is the Hebrew word N-E-G-A. That's the transliteration. Nega, from which we get the word negative. Nothing negative can come nigh my dwelling. Well, my dwelling is this house that I live in, yes, but my dwelling is also this body. So nothing negative can come nigh my body. Cancer can't come nigh my body. Sickness and disease cannot come nigh my body. Tuberculosis is not allowed to come into my body. Uh, you know, uh, smallpox <laughs> is not allowed to come into my body. Whatever disease you want to name can't come into my body because it would be a negative thing and nothing negative. See, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Nothing negative or evil can come nigh my dwelling. Well, this is my physical dwelling. I am a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a physical body. That means I am a pneuma. I have a suke. I live in a soma. Now, those are the Greek words that's translated spirit, soul, and body. So this body is soma, S-O-M-A, transliterated, soma. So this body, I don't know if you've ever... <laughs> Boy, I'm really, I'm digressing a bit here. I don't know if you've ever been involved in the study of, of like natural health and so forth, but one of the things they talk about is a soma type. A soma type is a type of body that you have. If you're really, really skinny and you burn up energy real quick and you're wiry, that's a, a kind of a soma type. If you're kind of large, <laughs> you know, like me, that's a kind of a soma type. You know, uh, maybe my metabolism isn't quite as fast as yours, or maybe I eat more than you do, or, you know, whatever. But I have a different body type. That's a soma type. Well, that's part of where that word comes from, is that word soma, the physical body. But my physical body is my possession. I live in this body. It's my dwelling, and nothing negative can come nigh this body. So, see, that's what we have to, that's what we have to believe. That's what we have to speak, and in speaking it, those words return to God, and when those words return to God, they contain within them the power to cause them to come to pass in your life. Whew, do you see that we got it made? This cycle that's happening is designed 
to keep us well, blessed, financially, socially, every other way. We are blessed in whatever we put our hand to. We're surrounded by favor. Woo, the favor of God. Hallelujah. See, we begin to confess these things. We begin to say these things. And you know what you'll find out? You'll find out that those words have within them, because they're God's words, they have within them the power to cause those words to come to pass. All right, let's, let's read our next verse of Scripture here, Hebrews 4.14. Seeing then that we have this great high priest, Jesus, that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our homologio. Homologia is speaking the same thing as the written word. So I put the written word in my mouth. Now I begin to speak it. As I speak it, then I hold fast to it. I hold fast to my confession of faith. That means I don't let go of it. I don't change my confession based on what I observe in the natural world, in the natural realm. I may look at my body and say, wow, boy, I don't look too healed. No matter what I look like, I'm the healed of the Lord, hallelujah. I'm not moved by what I see. You know, there's a, there's a wonderful charismatic song. Whose report will you believe? I shall believe the report of the Lord. It's actually taken from Scripture. But I can hear that song playing in my head. Whose report will you believe? We, we believe the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. I can hear that. And as I hear that, I meditate on that, and I know that I'll always believe the report of the Lord. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. I'll always stay with the Word of God. I'll never quit. I'll never... Basically, here's the thing. Let's put it in the positive. I will hold fast my profession of faith. See, the negative is I'll never let go of my confession of faith. But let's put it positively. I'll hold fast the profession of my faith. Hallelujah. Without wavering. Amen. Now, that goes right to our next scripture. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. See, the without wavering part means we don't change based on, again, circumstances. We don't waver in the face of what may seem different from what we're confessing out of our mouth. We only believe the Word of God. The written, rain, uh, well, Raymond's is spoken, the Logos is the written. The, we believe the Logos written Word of God, period, end the discussion, we don't waver. Amen? Now, we take that Logos, put it in our heart, okay, and then we speak it out of our mouth. Then it becomes the spoken word, hallelujah, the rhema. Now, I know a lot of people have taught in the past, and this is good teaching, that there's a logos word that's written on the page, and there's a rhema word that gets down in your heart and comes out of your mouth. And they use the terminology, you've got to get a rhema word for it to really work for you. And I understand what they're saying. It means you take the written word and you get it down into your heart and then whatever's in your heart in abundance, that's what comes out of your mouth. And whatever comes out of your mouth, that's what comes to pass. See, that's why this phrase, homologio, is so fascinating and so powerful to me. And that is this. What is in the written word of God, we speak the same as what's in the written word of God. We don't waver. We don't vary. We don't have our own opinions or ideas or interpretations. We speak only what the Word of God says. Do you see that? And if we're committed, holding fast our profession, without wavering, if we're committed to that, and we do that, and we do it on a regular basis, you will see a difference in your life. Now, as I've said many times before, I've used the example from the book of James, James chapter 3, about that big ship beginning to turn. It takes time to turn because it's so big. There's so much resistance. There's resistance in this world to you having healing, prosperity, blessing, favor, all of those things. The world's trying, and I say the world, the world system is trying to keep you from receiving a natural manifestation of those blessings of the Word of God. But see, that's where you hold fast without wavering.
That's how you use your tongue as the rudder of a mighty ship, and it begins to come about. It begins to change course and direction. you got to hold to it. But once you hold to that course, it will come about. It will change. And it may take a little time for your life, for your body, for your circumstance to get in line with your confession, but it will. I guarantee <laughs> it will. Praise the Lord. And it's more than just Dr. Bill guaranteeing it. It's the Word of God guaranteeing it. Amen? It's the Bible that guarantees it. It's God that spoke that Word that guarantees it. That's what makes it so important, is that He's the one who holds the Word of God uh, and makes it come to pass in your life. If you do what the Bible says you're supposed to do. Now, if you just sit around and you just say, oh, I don't believe that stuff. Well, you're going to get just what you're believing for, which is, I don't believe that stuff. It doesn't work for me. Well, guess what? It's not working for you the way it ought to. In fact, actually, it's working exactly the way it's supposed to because whatever you're confessing, in this case, that you don't believe it or you don't receive it or it's not going to happen for you, that's exactly what you're going to get is what you've been saying. Well, guess what? If I start confessing blessing, and I start confessing favor, and I start confessing what the Word of God says about me, I'm going to get exactly what I'm saying, which is the blessing, and the favor, and the healing, and the health. Amen? Whew. If you'll see this, if you'll get a hold of this, it will be a blessing to you. Praise the Lord. Well, we're out of time. We're going to have to go. I want you to write me here at Word of Faith Ministries. Word of Faith Ministries. Our address is P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina. The zip code 27262. As I always say, you can write me at my email address. That is Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L. -L, uh, and that's at at sign wofm dot org which stands for word of faith ministries wofm dot org and mentioning wofm dot org that's our website i mentioned a while ago that red banner about speakfaith.tv on the very front page there's also articles there there's more video teachings there there's audio teaching all kinds of messages good articles with lots of research and and scripture references our what we believe section if you click on that thing at the top there the little link that says what we believe that alone is a bible study that will help you tremendously just to go through each one of those things and look up those scriptures and see not only what we believe but what the bible teaches about all kinds of different topics so it's a blessing for you praise the lord well join us again next time remember until then to fulfill the word of god The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.